This, believe it or not, is the Aral Sea. At least that's what it says on the map. Now a more apt description would be the Aral Desert. Not a giver of life, but a taker. Nature's punishment for mankind abusing its bounty. The water is now more than 100 kilometres from here, and experts predict it could disappear entirely by the end of this decade. That would mean that the fourth largest sea in the world would have dried up in just 50 years. Moynak was once a prosperous seaside town, where people from far off Moscow came for their holidays. Now the sea has shrunk away. This cannery was once Moynak's largest employer, but there's simply no fish left to can. The last of the 22 species that once thrived in the Aral Sea died out in the 1980s. Biz kendimizden barajında barlakan aralıskiden temin ettik. Barlak prodüktene, barlak otunda kumur jagat neydi? Kumurdun bazı arzan neydi? Kendimizden gelet neydi kumur bizge? Onam kendimizden gelet neydi? Am mezat kendimizden gelet neydi? Ay arzan işlerde. Kendimiz hayat kanan ki halka uopşe kinsilik tuldu. Baga kumbat bit. Irali Tankimalov sailed the Aral Sea for 29 years, starting as a young man and rising to captain. Now the wreck of the vessel he commanded sits opposite his front door. A striking symbol of how the sea has given way to desert, but even worse, to salt. While a little salt is life-sustaining, too much destroys it. Bizim yerde o bulay kugurmesten kaldım bizim sapkozlarda. Hem adamın din sağlığında bile ihtiyaç vardı. Kat adam din sağlığında. Toz ayak kolga, buna buundar sırhra. Adamın o bir juru kabiliyet ne? A blanket of salt now envelops much of the region, sapping the ground of its fertility and the air of its freshness. So degraded is the environment that it's no longer fit for human habitation. It's a place wrecked by disease, cancer, anemia, birth defects, and one of the world's highest rates of tuberculosis. It is uh, the world's largest, worst environmental disaster, man-made created uh, disaster, uh, which uh, is affecting directly five million people in, uh, in Central Asia. Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders, is a charity that usually operates in war zones. For the first time, it has set up a project devoted solely to an environmental catastrophe, the war here against tuberculosis. That won't do anything for their kidney diseases, for their cancers, for the high rates of anemia. But, uh, you know, if we are able to stop a few thousand people coughing to death every year from tuberculosis, that's fine by us. So how did this happen, and who's to blame? There are two culprits, communism and cotton. The old Soviet Union decreed that its cotton be grown in the desert regions of Central Asia, irrigated by rivers that fed into the Aral Sea. We communists, when it became clear that the land chosen wasn't suited to the thirsty crop, 
Soviet planners simply increased the use of hazardous chemicals. Нужно было лечить землю, как лечат измученного человека. Ведь это наша земля, и чтобы она жила, мы продолжаем делать тех первых, кто по ленинскому призыву положил начало освоению степи голодной. A classic Soviet blunder, and not the first time that the communists endangered the lives of their own citizens. Those people who were responsible for uh, developing the scheme are now responsible for rectifying the problem. And some people have come forward and acknowledged that indeed they knew from the very beginning that this development plan for Central Asia would cause uh, very negative effects. Yet far from being brought to account for the excesses of the Soviet era, the Uzbek leadership dances to the same old tune. Nine years after independence, the old communist boss is still president, control remains centralized and freedom curtailed. The happy faces, as in the old days, mask a desperate need for reform. Many rural regions are worse off now than they were in Soviet times. For the cotton industry, the harvest goes on as if nothing has happened. Uzbekistan remains the world's fifth largest cotton producer, and every year Uzbeks are obliged to leave their jobs to pick the national crop, press ganged in a manner reminiscent of Stalin's collectives. Yet their efforts ensure that the region's arable land is shrinking all the time. Irrigation has dramatically pushed up the amount of salt in the water table. Now more than a million hectares of land can no longer sustain any crops at all. I think the first time that it really hit me that something was up with the environment pretty seriously is when I drove to Moynark and as you drive along the side of the road and you can see the salt on the soil and I just thought, ah, you know, it's, um, that's not right because it reminds me, you know, the old man's farm back home, he's got a bit of a salt issue. Ed Negus, as you may have guessed, is Australian, the logistics manager for the Médecins Sans Frontières Aral Sea program. Ed is working to build waste disposal pits, as well as lots of toilets where none existed before. But so critical is the water shortage, he fears that mass evacuation may be the only answer. You shudder to think, really, if um, something drastic doesn't happen with water and getting clean water just for the people to drink, then uh, yeah, it's going to be um, going to be a real mess. So, what do you do? Do you try and move 300,000 people? And uh, if so, where do you move them to? And what do they do there? Some of those who can have already gone, crossing thousands of kilometres of desert to escape the region's problems. And salt is eating into everything, even Muinak's public library which collapsed after salt corroded the bricks. The water here contains some six grams of salt per litre, three times the safe level for human consumption. Where once sea breezes gently blew, comes this. The ferocious winds whip up dust from the old seabed, mingled with salt and a cocktail of poisons from the cotton industry including DDT. Those winds are now free to come in, pick up the deposited salts off the seabed and blow that back into the face of the population. It's estimated that there are over 150,000 tonnes of toxic dust coming off the seabed. If and when the sea completely dries up, they estimate there will be about 15 billion tonnes of salts released into the environment. <laughs> Salt 
Such is the inheritance bequeathed to the toddlers at kindergarten number six, the lowest life expectancy in Uzbekistan. Their parents have TB and other diseases. And while the toddler's health is being monitored closely, they're already showing signs of severe problems, with more certain to come as they get older. The government seems unable or unwilling to confront the enormity of what it's unleashed. It turned to the international community for help, but it's simply too late. When the World Bank arrived in 92, 1992, they came very much with the uh, mandate of restoring the Aral Sea. Slowly but surely, over time, they have dropped that whole uh, objective, and they're only now talking about restoring the Delta. Indeed, at this point in time, it does look almost mathematically impossible to restore the sea. There's even questions about, never mind restoration, but stabilizing the sea uh, is, even, is even questionable. With the vessel he once captained marooned at his front door, Irali Tankimalov is already 100 kilometers from the nearest water. In a decade, say the experts, all of it may be gone. It's human folly on a momentous scale. The world's fourth largest sea turned into a vast, desolate salt pan in the space of 50 years. Вы знаете, конечно, это то, что море высыхает, это наша всеобщая боль, конечно. Да, я думаю, что, конечно, если море будет высыхать, если нет воды, какое живое может быть, правильно, хорошим?